I'm at a gypsy. You give me a semi at the moment because uh, I got an email from UPS yesterday saying that my MX Tech suspension is on the way. So I'm gonna, I'm literally gonna be running like my first ever A kit suspension here Let's in a couple go. weeks. Let's so go. I got like, I got their National Shock, and then I got, uh, I can't remember what the forks are called, like Blackbird or something. They've got like full fork inserts, but it's all Kashima coated. It's all just like. Oh, so yeah. oh yeah oh, you yeah. just got me excited when you said <laughs> when you said how good like a kit stuff is so for me that's never really ridden on something like that um what's the difference because so in my head right i think about my bike as anytime i crash it's because i've made the wrong prediction of what's about to happen that, so in common. my head i'm like <laughs> so in my head, I'm like, all right, if I get this suspension that's really, really, really good and has all of the best components and has everything the best that we can make it, does that make my bike way more predictable? And hopefully in my head, this new level of predictability will stop me from having these crashes which are caused by me fucking up the prediction. <laughs> Is that kind of in line with like how you think about <laughs> factory suspension? It, yeah, I I agree. Um, so like my thing is like you can make stock suspension great, hands down. That that's completely possible. But you need a lot of testing because every rider is different, and this rider might like this, but you might not like that. Um, with me, with the whole like a kit, it's easiest way to explain it is like <laughs> you have a lot more hold up there's more cushion if you mess mm. up you're okay and that's what you just explained is like if you mess up you're done where with like a kit and you actually like set it up right for you you're allowed to mess up it just won't go over the bars or like side to side um I, one of the prime examples I remember is uh, Blue Diamond, uh, Jason Lawrence, J Law. He was uh, he, my man, my man, right? Um, he was. There's a section where it was like a double double and then a tabletop, and he would. The tabletop was like maybe 40, 50 feet, but he turned it into like 60, 70, and you would see when he would scrub, launch it, his bike, especially like mine. Normal person, if you OJ a jump, you get a, a, a rebound or like some type of kick, right? You don't drive forward, you yeah. just hit hard and you're like, you're done. J Law's bike, he would OJ it, land and keep driving. And it's like nothing ever phased him. And I was like, that right there is real suspension. And that's what I feel like I can do now is like, I can just OJ something and be okay you just keep driving forward and you move on to the next thing but with like general stock stuff you will go for a ride you will feel it more in your body that 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 that's the best explanation i can get you so what like have you gotten so for me i enjoy the process of um i've, I've had like a real change in my love for motorcycles through the last four years of doing this podcast in terms of riding them okay. like i was in the sport constantly and i was around the sport constantly all my friends are in the sport like so in terms of being in the sport i was very in the sport and i have been my entire life but the riding things kind of come in way it comes in waves like i compete in jiu-jitsu pretty seriously so a lot of times like i'd give priority to my jiu-jitsu a lot of times i'll be rocking up to the track completely fucked from jiu-jitsu so i was doing like three or four laps <laughs> so i had i've had like a real big change though and it's because of the podcast like there's so many um i'm honestly i just get inspired to ride by guys like you and then I've started going to events and then we've been doing these races and through the process of, you know, just, I guess like getting that love back for the riding of the sport, I've just tried to get, and I like what you said before about, uh, you were like, oh, that was like a win for me. Like I'm setting the world on fire in my own regard. Right. Mm -hmm. And I fucking love that dude because 
that's really all that matters right like yeah who gives a fuck who you're setting the world on fire in comparison to like if you're setting the world on fire in your own life in your own way that's dope that's a win yeah so for me i'm not super fast but i'm getting better and i can tell when i go to the track i'm getting better and i'm like man i didn't use my rear brake it felt like for a year because i was trying to get used to riding on my toes and i was like well i find it hard to use the back brake when i ride on my toes so i guess i just won't use the back brake for a while and it's like you know i'm like literally taking the process of getting better seriously and suspension is kind of one of those things too where like i every time i get on a new bike i put the clickers to stock and i measure the sag and then i'll like make sure I'll get like the balance of the fork height right to where the front's not knifing uh-huh. and but I can get over the front. So it's like I'm kind of going through this process of like trying to be good at riding, good at testing, good just not for any other reason than when I go to the track to like that's just my little space to do my shit. Yeah, I'm doing it for me. And man, the fun that I'm having and like the the stoke that I've got for riding and and I find that uh so the that's why i'm sort of super excited about the suspension thing because it's like man here's like that national shock that mx tech make has got like crazy levels of adjustment am i fast no do i think it's cool to like know what high speed compression does yeah. yes so have you gone through a process of testing where you've like really tried to learn the bike because i watched some videos when i knew that you were coming on um there was a video of you at the parlor national and you were talking to ML and Michael Lindsay, and he's just, he's the team owner, team manager, mm. and he's asking you what you did to your own suspension. And there's like videos of you on the clickers. Yeah. So it's like, have you kind of adopted that same philosophy of like, I'm really gonna like learn my shit? I, yes, when I was doing it on my own and being like my own mechanic, yes, I was all about it because I wanted to know what was going on. Where, I'm I'm fortunate enough now to where I can be like, hey Tony, the bike's doing this, and he's he'll give me an option. Do you mm. want to do this or this? And I'll be like, let's do that. And uh, yeah, it's easier for me to be with Tony now about my suspension because he's a former pro. He he gets it. He mm. I don't know how to explain a lot of things but I can explain it in a way that he understands and he's like, okay, let's do this. Cause this is what it, the bike's doing. Um, and he told me it's okay to say no if it, if it works or it doesn't work. Mm. Um, and suspension is kind of hard for me because like, like I said, I never really had the best suspension growing up and it's always kind of been long, been like from my dad, here's a set of suspension put it on the bike, let's go racing. Okay, I don't know if it's good, I don't know if it's bad, I got a bike. And that that's the most important part at the end of the day. So when I came on here with Tony, Tony would be asking me like, hey, like, does, is the bike doing this or this? And I'm just like, uh, I didn't really pay attention to that. Like, I, I let me go back out and try to like, really like feel the bike and- Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm a sensitive rider, but at the same time I'm not. I think it's because I can easily adapt. Cause growing up, there was a time, I think it was twenty fourteen, I'd go to a local race, I'd race my super mini, my one twenty five, a two fifty two stroke and a two fifty F. That's so sick. That, and I had to adapt and it would literally take me like two turns and I'd be like, Okay, we're good. So uh with me it kinda hurts me because I can adapt to anything really, but Tony told me like from the start, like, look, you need to like learn to be picky and just accept the fact that you're allowed to be picky now. You can tell me when something's not right. So that's been a thing and I still like to be in tune with the suspension though, Uh, back to what you're saying because you gotta know what's under you. I mean, I don't wanna be on a bike that I don't know what's inside or like, what's done you know like you, you gotta be a hundred percent on board with the bike because you and the bike are a full package you are what gets the job done so 
Yeah, no, it's, I, I like to know what's done to the motor, what's done to the suspension, if there's any changes. I'm open to anything, but no, it's, uh, I definitely like being in tune with everything.